We continue today with chapter 13, Attainment of the Real World. Sit quietly and look upon the world you see and tell yourself the real world is not like this. It has no buildings and there are no streets where people walk alone and separate. There are no stores where people buy an endless list of things they do not need. It is not lit with artificial light and night comes not upon it. There is no day that brightens and grows dim. There is no loss. Nothing is there but shines and shines forever. The world you see must be denied, for sight of it is costing you a different kind of vision. You cannot see both worlds, for each of them involves a different kind of seeing and depends on what you cherish. The sight of one is possible because you have denied the other. Both are not true, yet either one will seem as real to you as the amount to which you hold it dear. And yet their power is not the same because their real attraction to you is unequal. You do not really want the world you see, for it has disappointed you since time began. The homes you have built have never sheltered you. The roads you made have led you nowhere, and no city that you built has withstood the crumbling assault of time. Nothing you made but has the mark of death upon it. Hold it not, dear, for it is old and tired and ready to return to dust even as you made it. This aching world has not the power to touch the living world at all. You could not give it that, and so although you turn in sadness from it, you cannot find in it the road that leads away from it into another world. Yet the real world has the power to touch you even here, because you love it, and what you call with love will come to you. Love always answers, being unable to deny a call for help, or not to hear the cries of pain that rise to it from every part of this strange world you made but do not want. All that you need to give this world away in glad exchange for what you did not make is willingness to learn the one you made is false. You have been wrong about the world because you have misjudged yourself. From such a twisted reference point, what could you see? All seeing starts with the perceiver, who judges what is true and what is false. And what he judges false he does not see. You who would judge reality cannot see it, for whenever judgment enters, reality has slipped away. The out of mind is out of sight, because what is denied is there, but it is not recognized. Christ is still there although you do not know him. His being does not depend upon your recognition. He lives within you in the quiet present and waits for you to leave the past behind and enter into the world he holds out to you in love. No one in this distracted world but has seen some glimpses of the other world about him. Yet while he still lays value on his own, he will deny the vision of the other, maintaining that he loves what he loves not, and following not the road that love points out. Love leads so gladly. As you follow him, you will rejoice that you have found his company, and learned of him the joyful journey home. You wait but for yourself, to give this sad world over, and exchange your errors, for the peace of God is but your will and Christ will always offer you the will of God in recognition that you share it with Him. It is God's will that nothing touch His Son except Himself, and nothing else comes nigh unto Him. He is as safe from pain as God Himself, who watches over Him in everything. The world about Him shines with love, because God placed Him in Himself, where pain is not, and love surrounds him without end or flaw. Disturbance of his peace can never be. 
in perfect sanity he looks on love for it is all about him and within him he must deny the world of pain the instant he perceives the arms of love around him and from this point of safety he looks quietly about him and recognizes that the world is one with him the peace of God passeth your understanding only in the past yet here it is and you can understand it now God loves his son forever and his son returns his father's love forever the real world is the way that leads you to remembrance of the one thing that is wholly true and wholly yours for all else you have lent yourself in time and it will fade but this one thing is always yours being the gift of God unto his son your one reality was given you and by it God created you as one with him you will first dream of peace and then awaken to it your first exchange of what you made for what you want is the exchange of nightmares for the happy dreams of love in these lie your true perceptions for the Holy Spirit corrects the world of dreams where all perception is knowledge needs no correction yet the dreams of love lead unto knowledge in them you see nothing fearful and because of this they are welcome that you offer knowledge love waits on welcome not on time and the real world is but your welcome of what always was therefore the call of joy is in it and your glad response is your awakening to what you have not lost praise then the father for the perfect sanity of his most holy son your father knoweth that you have need of nothing in heaven this is so for what could you need in eternity in your world you do need things it is a world of scarcity in which you find yourself because you are lacking yet can you find yourself in such a world without the Holy Spirit the answer would be no yet because of him the answer is a joyous yes as mediator between the two worlds he knows what you have need of and what will not hurt you ownership is a dangerous concept if it is left to you the ego wants to have things for salvation for possession is its law possession for its own sake is the ego's fundamental creed a basic cornerstone in the churches it builds to itself and at its altar it demands you lay all of the things it bids you get leaving you no joy in them everything the ego tells you that you need will hurt you for although the ego urges you again and again to get it leaves you nothing for what you get it will demand of you and even from the very hands that grasped it it will be wrenched and hurled into the dust for where the ego sees salvation it sees separation and so you lose whatever you have gotten in its name therefore ask not of yourself what you need for you do not know and your advice to yourself will hurt you for what you think you need will merely serve to tighten up your world against the light and render you unwilling to question the value that this world can really hold for you only the Holy Spirit knows what you need for he will give you all things that do not block the way to light and what else could you need in time he gives you all the things that you need have and will renew them as long as you have need of them he will take nothing from you as long as you have any need of it and yet he knows that everything you need is temporary and will but last until you step aside from all your needs and realize that all of them have been fulfilled therefore he has no investment in the things that he supplies except to make certain that you will not use them on behalf of lingering in time he knows that you are not at home there and he wills no delay to wait upon your joyous homecoming leave then your needs to him he will supply them with no emphasis at all upon them what comes to you of him comes safely for he will ensure it never can become a dark spot 
hidden in your mind and kept to hurt you. Under his guidance you will travel light and journey lightly, for his sight is ever on the journey's end, which is his goal. God's Son is not a traveler through outer worlds. However holy his perception may become, no world outside himself holds his inheritance. Within himself he has no needs, for light needs nothing but to shine in peace, and from itself to let the rays extend in quiet to infinity. Whenever you are tempted to undertake a useless journey that would lead away from light, remember what you really want and say, The Holy Spirit leads me unto Christ, and where else would I go? What need have I but to awake in Him? Then follow Him in joy, with faith that He will lead you safely through all dangers to your peace of mind this world may set before you. Kneel not before the altars to sacrifice, and seek not what you will surely lose. Content yourself with what you will as surely keep, and be not restless, for you undertake a quiet journey to the peace of God, where He would have you be in quietness. In me, you have already overcome every temptation that would hold you back. We walk together on the way to quietness that is the gift of God. Hold me dear, for what except your brothers can you need? We will restore to you the peace of mind that we must find together. The Holy Spirit will teach you to awaken unto us and to yourself. This is the only real need to be fulfilled in time. Salvation from the world lies only here. My peace I give you. Take it of me in glad exchange for all the world has offered but to take away. And we will spread it like a veil of light across the world's sad face in which we hide our brothers from the world and it from them. We cannot sing Redemption's hymn alone. My task is not completed until I have lifted every voice with mine. And yet it is not mine, for as it is my gift to you, so was it the Father's gift to me, given me through His Spirit. The sound of it will banish sorrow from the mind of God's Most Holy Son, where it cannot abide. Healing in time is needed for joy cannot establish its eternal reign where sorrow dwells. You dwell not here, but in eternity. You travel but in dreams, while safe at home. Give thanks to every part of you that you have taught how to remember you. Thus does God's Son give thanks unto His Father for His purity. And from the workbook. Lesson 100 My part is essential to God's plan for salvation. Just as God's Son completes His Father, so your part in it completes your Father's plan. Salvation must reverse the mad belief in separate thoughts and separate bodies, which lead separate lives and go their separate ways. One function shared by separate minds, unites them in one purpose, for each one of them is equally essential to them all. God's will for you is perfect happiness. Why should you choose to go against His will? The part that He has saved for you to take in working out His plan is given you that you might be restored to what He wills. This part is as essential to his plan as to your happiness. Your joy must be complete to let his plan be understood by those to whom he sends you. They will see their function in your shining face and hear God calling to them in your happy laugh. You are indeed essential to God's plan. Without your joy, his joy is incomplete. Without your smile, the world cannot be saved. While you are sad, the light that God Himself appointed as the means to save the world is dim and lustreless, and no one laughs because all laughter can but echo yours. 
You are indeed essential to God's plan. Just as your light increases every light that shines in heaven, so your joy on earth calls to all minds to let their sorrows go, and take their place beside you in God's plan. God's messengers are joyous, and their joy heals sorrow and despair. They are the proof that God wills perfect happiness for all who will accept their Father's gifts as theirs. We will not let ourselves be sad today, for if we do, we fail to take the part that is essential to God's plan, as well as to our vision. Sadness is the sign that you would play another part instead of what has been assigned to you by God. Thus do you fail to show the world how great the happiness He wills for you, and so you do not recognize that it is yours. Today we will attempt to understand joy is our function here. If you are sad, your part is unfulfilled, and all the world is thus deprived of joy along with you. God asks you to be happy, so the world can see how much He loves His Son, and wills no sorrow rises to abate His joy. No fear besets Him to disturb His peace. You are God's messenger today. You bring His happiness to all you look upon, His peace to everyone who looks on you, and sees His message in your happy face. We will prepare ourselves for this today, in our five minute practice periods, by feeling happiness arise in us according to our Father's will and ours. Begin the exercises with the thought today's idea contains. Then realize your part is to be happy. Only this is asked of you or anyone who wants to take his place amongst God's messengers. Think what this means. You have indeed been wrong in your belief that sacrifice is asked. You but receive according to God's plan and never lose or sacrifice or die. Now, let us try to find that joy that proves to us in all the world God's will for us. It is your function that you find it here, and that you find it now. For this you came. Let this one be the day that you succeed. Look deep within you, undismayed by all little thoughts and foolish goals you pass as you ascend to meet the Christ in you. He will be there, and you can reach Him now. What could you rather look upon in place of Him who waits that you may look on Him? What little thought has power to hold you back? What foolish goal can keep you from success when He who calls to you is God Himself? He will be there. You are essential to His plan. You are His messenger today and you must find what He would have you give. Do not forget the idea for today, between your hourly practice periods. It is yourself who calls to you today, and it is Him you answer every time you tell yourself you are essential to God's plan for the salvation of the world. My part is essential to God's plan for salvation. Today we experience the guiltless world. Today we open up within to the attainment of the real world. The real world is calm and tranquil and still. The real world shines with the light of Christ, with the love of the Holy Spirit. There are no contrasts in the real world. There are no comparisons. There are no opposites. Everything in the real world is whole and complete. The world of duality is never what the mind wants. As Jesus tells us, 
You do not really want the world you see, for it has disappointed you since time began. None of the homes have sheltered us. All of the cities crumble and have to be rebuilt and crumble again. Everything in the world, everything in history is old and tired and ready to return to dust even as you made it. The real world has the power to touch you even here because you love it. Today we open up to this beautiful sight, this healed perception, this happy dream, being the calling of our hearts, this is the forgiven world. This is letting thine eye be single. This is opening to the peace of God within. Today we are encouraged, encouraged by Christ in his expression of the real world. Jesus tells us, you will first dream of peace and then awaken to it. Your first exchange of what you made for what you want is the exchange of nightmares for the happy dreams of love. In these lie your true perceptions, for the Holy Spirit corrects the world of dreams where all perception is. These dreams of love lead unto knowledge. They lead us to oneness. This is our gateway. This is our happy step. Today I would give all to all. I would retain no concepts of ownership or possession. Today I let all things be exactly as they are. I remember that the Holy Spirit will give everything I need and will take nothing from me as long as I have need of it. The Holy Spirit will renew everything I need as long as I have need of it. And yet, the Holy Spirit knows that everything I seem to need is temporary and will only last until I step aside from all needs and realize that they all have been fulfilled. Today I open to this real world this forgiven dream, this happy dream in which nothing is needed and everything is provided. Today I open up to divine providence, living in a state of joy, being content with who I am, resting in quietness and stillness. Today is the day I give thanks to God for His purity and love and everlasting life. My part is essential to God's plan for salvation. Amen.